So as an, as an instructor, I think uh, what I want of my students is a good work ethic, primarily. Um, and I like to encourage them um, to be curious about stuff, to ask questions, I encourage interaction, um, you know, to make sure that um, they fully understand the concept, that it's not um, just about plugging in a formula when, uh, when they're trying to solve a problem in the class. Um, so curiosity, interaction, um, and good work ethics, as I, as I just mentioned, this is very important because being smart is not sufficient. Um, one also has to do the legwork. And, um, and a math class is kind of like preparing for a marathon rather than a sprint. So you, you, you don't just show up to a marathon one morning and run 10 kilometers. You have to prepare for it over time. And, and so that is important to, to, to put in the legwork, um, you know. Um, and, and, and also, you know, the other thing that um, I like to, uh, to help my students with is, is um, to help them uh, figure out how to study because some of them don't know that. And it's about pointing out resources that they have available, uh, talking about time management, talking about keeping up with the course material. Um, so yeah, so in a broad sense, it's, it's a bunch of different things. Um, so to break down the class, I think this comes um, in several steps. Um, it's not just a one-step approach. So first of all, of course, you have to impart the concept. You know, so, so this is, you know, we are, we're going to talk about this, this, uh, this material. Uh, what, what, what does it, you know, what, what is it about? You know, what are we trying to do here? Um, and then discuss things like what tools do we have to approach this material? Um, how, how, would we, uh, how would we look at this problem and try to solve it? Uh, these are the tools that we have at hand. How are we going to apply them? Um, so that would be the first, first step, pretty much. Um, and then uh, we work with examples. So here's an example that demonstrates the concept, and here's how we use the tools to solve the problem. And then move on and say, well, here is a variation on that same problem. So I have changed this parameter or that one, and how has the problem changed and how are we going to deal with it, um, right? And then it's also about uh, connecting all the dots. Like this is, this is the concept that we're studying today, but it's not a standalone concept. Um, this is what we had talked about before and this is how they are related. So making those connections um, um, is important, I think, uh, so that you know, we can make use of uh, the past skills we have acquired and apply it to the current problem. But also then, um, it's also important, I think, to make connections with the real world. You know, why do we care about this concept at all? How is this applicable to the real world? How, how, do we, how, how does learning about this concept help us with our day-to-day -day understanding of the world? So I think you know, all those bits have to sort of come together. And then at the end of, uh, of um, the class or when you're preparing for an exam, you say, okay, so now we have learned A, B, C, D, E, F, and here's a problem, um, how are we going to solve it? So we take a look at the problem, break it down, and say, what, what, are, what is it we are trying to do? You know, what's our goal here? Um, and if that's our goal, what are the tools we have? So how do we make use of the tools to approach that goal? So math, uh, math. I think generally math and science, math um, is um, is definitely important uh, for our day-to-day -day life. Um, you know, whether whether you're doing your household finances or whether you're going off into industry and managing finances for a big corporation, or whether you want to go to NASA, be an engineer for them, and you know, make calculations that make sure that make sure that your rover lands on Mars and doesn't miss it or whether you go off to Wall Street and, and figure out the stock market. So math is very much a part of, uh, of life from, from the little things to the big things. Um, and this is reflected, I think, in Texas A&M um, in the course requirements that various majors have. So it's not just engineering that requires math. It's not just physics and chemistry that require math. But biomedical sciences require math. Um, if you're studying business and finance, you have math course requirements. And it's even in things like fisheries and agri-sciences. So ev almost every uh, major has some math requirement, which, which I think um, 
uh, reflects the fact that it is so useful and it goes back all the way to kindergarten where you talk about the three R's which is reading, writing and arithmetic that every child has to learn about. Um, so for, uh, for people who are planning, you know, for students still in high school that are planning to go off to college, well, first of all, I would say education is such a privilege. And if you have the opportunity um, of being accepted to a university, you know, make, make use of it. Make your education work for you. Make use of your time at university. And, um, you know, going off to university, leaving home um, for the first time, being a freshman, it comes with all kinds of challenges, right? So you're, you're on your own. So there are lots of things that you will be figuring out in the first year. You know, how to manage your time, how to, how to uh, you know, make sure you give adequate attention to all the different courses that you have. Um, so so there's, 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 a, there's a learning curve. But, um, but I also think it's important to, um, you know, network, you know, make friends, have study groups that help you, that will take the place of your family. So, um, you know, you don't want to isolate yourself. So you want to, uh, you want to be able to continue performing well as if, uh, you know, as, as the students most likely have done in high school. Um, and then uh, you also want to schedule a little bit of time for fun because you don't want to burn out. So it's, it's a lot about managing your time, managing your resources, figuring things out. Um, but the other thing um, that I also like to tell my freshman students when they come to college is uh, make use of your summers wisely. You know, you, you've come to university with an idea of this is, this is what I'm going to major in. But before you commit to something for life, why don't you scope out all your possibilities? So why don't you take a summer to do research, uh, intern at a, at a company? Uh, if teaching is something that interests you, go and try to spend a summer teaching, do some volunteer work. So broaden your horizons. So there are, there are lots of um, resources available to you, opportunities available to you in college, and try to make use of them and, um, and figure out, you know, as you figure out how to proceed forward in life. Um, I would have to say um, my interaction with students. I think that is the most rewarding part of being at Texas A&M. We have a very rich, very diverse student body. And over the years, I've um, been able to um, interact with several of them, hear their stories, uh, learn about them. Um, there's, uh, there's, a there's, a, there's a really strong sense of camaraderie. Uh, there is a lot of, um, um, uh, I mean, students are friendly. Um, they are very polite. Uh, there's the strong um, Aggie code of honor, uh, you know, and all of this contributes to making this a very rich environment. Uh, but also a and as you know, since you've been here, is, um, is, is, a, is a very highly ranked university with a very strong academic program, lots of departments that are um, very well ranked, um, you know, very, uh, doing a lot of good research. So all of that contributes to making a and um, such a great place to be at.